This was not the video that I intended to film today. Hi everybody, today I am doing something a little different. Originally, I had intended to film a plan with me in the Erin Condren teacher planner that I have been using for work. I came to the realization that it wasn't really doing what I needed it to, and that doesn't mean I'm not gonna use it anymore, but that I need to reevaluate it, and I'm kind of struggling right now. Do I want to use some digital tools like Asana or Google Calendar? And part of that also has to do with the fact that my husband and I are having a disconnect in how we plan our lives out. All of his shit is on a Google Calendar, and all of my shit is on an uh, analog calendar. What I've got here is my sketchbook and I've got these E. coli watercolor markers that I ordered and I'm gonna do a review on them for the channel in a couple of weeks, but I really wanna mess with them and so I'm gonna work big. Instead of using like pen, like a regular pen or whatever, I'm gonna use markers because why the hell not? I can use this for practicing brush lettering too if I feel like it. If not, I could just scribble. But I wanna break down the shit that I do for my work and what I think my husband and I might need and then I'm gonna go to my bullet journal and take all of that stuff and start figuring out where that could go. So this is not going to be a plan with me or a setup. This is more like a brainstorm. Just figured I'd get that out of the way after, you know, two minutes of rambling at you. Let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to start with is YouTube. And what I want to start with is I'm going to put the header down and then I'm going to list everything that goes into my YouTube channel. What does it take for me to have to operate this YouTube channel? What are all the different moving parts? almost spelled that wrong. <laughs> All right, I feel like I might have left some things out, but let's like let's go over this, right? So these are some of the things that go into having a YouTube channel. You need to come up with video ideas and it's helpful to have a spot to put video ideas. I also should mark that I need a spot. I forgot two things, motherfucker. So the two things I forgot were comments and um, viewer ideas. Like there's the ideas that I come up with when I'm thinking about them and then there's the ideas you come up with, which can go in the same spot. Okay, I added extra. So video ideas, you know, like I said, that come from me or that come from viewers. Then there's the calendar, the editorial calendar, planning in advance what the videos are going to be. I try to stay about a month in advance, but when it comes to holidays and things like that, it's better to think a little bit further ahead. I'm not that good at it. Then there is research, which you need to do before filming, especially if you're doing a review on a product. And again, I'm not great at this. This is not one of my strong suits. Filming, and I have this batch in real time. Batch filming is when I film like... I can do like two or three pen reviews in a row because it's all the same setup. I can just grab the pens, film them, and then I have them for a couple of weeks. Real time, what I mean by that is like plan with me's and bullet journal videos, which I film the week that they're going up and I can't film those in advance. Or if I can, it's only a day or two in advance. Then there's editing, something that takes up a lot of my time. <laughs> and it's probably something I could outsource, but I'm not really sure I'm ready for that yet. Thumbnails goes into the post-production, creating thumbnails. Same with the description. And I have several saved descriptions that I, depending on the type of video, that I will alter based on what video it is. We have lives, shopping, which goes in with being doing reviews. And it's also like if I need to go find something people have told me to check out, I might have to go hunt the Michaels in my area or whatever. That does take up time. And that's something I have to plan for. Analytics and promotion, two things I'm not very good at. Like I know kind of what I'm supposed to be looking at at analytics, but I'm not good at staying on top of it. Same with promotion. I'm actually really shitty at promoting my videos. I have a Facebook group. I have patrons. I have Instagram. I've got places I could promote my videos and I don't very often except for like live videos and things like that. And part of it's because I don't want to like spam people. And part of it's because I don't know how to do it without coming off like an asshole. So I just don't. And that's something I need to figure out how to be better at to let more people know what's happening without sounding like a sleaze ball. The last two things here are comments, responding to comments, hearting comments. Sometimes I'm better at this than others. I'm like, as you can tell, I'm not very organized, which is ironic as this is a planner channel. There are times I'm great at staying on top of comments and there's times I'm awful at it. And if you are one of the people whose comments I've missed, I apologize. I'm just, I'm shitty at it. And playlists, something that I had made an oath to myself that I would go into my playlist and add new videos and make new playlists every week or so because that helps the health of a YouTube channel. 
and I'm not good at it. So some in here are some things I think I'm pretty good at, some things I'm not so good at, some things I really suck at, but these are all the moving parts that go into having a YouTube channel, at least having my channel. This page is gonna be for the podcast, and we're gonna do the same thing. All right, so here is everything for the podcast. This is a little bit less than YouTube, and part of that's because I am still figuring it out. But the first kind of area that I have to think about is ideas for podcast episodes. There are the ideas I have for solo episodes that I record on my own, and then the ideas of having potential guests on the podcast. And that in and of itself is probably the biggest chunk of what I'm awful at keeping on top of. Potential guests means you have to keep a list that should be ever evolving of people that you'd like to have on the podcast. I have to email those people and I have to do that on some sort of a schedule, which I started off doing great at. And now I'm kind of willy nilly about it, which might be part of why I'm so frazzled and then following up on those emails. So with the follow up is like when you do confirm a guest, you have to send them some information ahead of time, like when the meeting, like when we're going to do it, get a time confirmed when the zoom is going to be and then a post follow up saying like this is the day the episode's going up. Here's your link, etc. Taking all of these things and building out an editorial calendar. Then there's other podcasts. Now, this is something that I'm kind I wasn't going to talk about, but I'm going to talk about it. Why the fuck not, right? This is an honest thing. So, part of marketing or talking about your podcast is getting onto other people's podcasts. Like it's kind of a like a like a like a system, right? Now, I have pitched myself to a few different podcasts and I've gotten some interest, but I haven't confirmed anything yet. I've been on one podcast aside from my own and that's the Planner Girl Chatter one. And I did that before I got onto this pod, started doing my own podcast, but I have not, I've been able to get guests that I want to have on my podcast, but I have not yet been able to secure myself a guest spot on somebody else's podcast yet, which kind of, you know, it kind of hits my vanity. Part of me is like, oh, what do you, do, do I'm not, am I not cool enough? Do I cuss too much? Like, what is it? So that is something that I am working on. Not only getting the nerve, because like part of it for me is that I don't have the nerve to pitch people. I am, every time I have done it, it has been terrifying. And when I don't hear back at all, or when I get something wishy-washy back from somebody, those things really hit my self-esteem and then it makes me not want to do it again. And I know that I need to. I know that it's one of those things where you have to keep getting no's because eventually you'll get a yes. But that's, I've been able to kind of rest in my comfort zone of reaching out to people to be on the podcast <laughs> that I haven't been as good at reaching out to get myself on other people's podcasts or to get other guests who maybe aren't in my comfort zone. So that's just me laying my true confessions bare for you. Be nice in the comments. Then, of course, there's the mechanics, the actual recording of the podcast, which I did not write on here, but that I need to schedule like recording. I gotta write that down. Recording of the podcast, whether it's me or me with somebody else then there is the editing of the podcast then doing again doing the description of the podcast getting it all uploaded promo again something I'm not very good at <laughs> then comments in Facebook and this mostly involves putting a post in my Facebook group and then keeping up on it and looking for comments about the podcast and continuing the conversation because that's very important to me this may not have quite as many pieces or maybe around as many pieces but it has a lot more moving parts because it involves other people something my YouTube channel does not this one is going to be for Patreon So here's the stuff that goes into my patron situation. The big thing here is the schedule, the patron calendar that goes out every month. And then I also do a weekly update, which not only talks about what's going on on Patreon, but also what goes on on my YouTube channel and the podcast. They get heads up of everything that's coming. It's just a big overall look at everything that's happening. Then I have my hangout lives that I do on both YouTube and Facebook. And one of the things I need to add here is I need to come up my, my ideas for the lives sometimes that can be rough depending on how inspired I am at any given time. Patreon Lens, which kind of functions like Snapchat or Instagram stories, but just for patrons. Adding people to and maintenance of my Facebook group for my patrons. Downloads, which I do every month. Sneak peeks, which includes the weekly look at my content. It includes getting early looks at the challenges every month and early looks at some of my videos. 
Then there is the feedback day projects that I'm working on that I work on with my patrons. For example, we did a lot of work with the wheel that I used yesterday in my live plan with me ahead of time with the pa that was developed with my patrons. The podcast was another project that was developed with my patrons before it even started. And then the back end, you know, checking on things like rewards, the rewards that need to be fulfilled, helping people if they have a payment problem, stuff like that, like the technical side of it, which is my least favorite side of it, to be honest. So this is all my Patreon shit. Now this is going to be for freelance and this is any work that I do outside of like the content creation. So this is things like one-off jobs, work that I do for people like Chrissy and Designs, stuff like that. I'm not going to go into too much detail about specific projects here because there's some things I can't talk about. There's other things that are just, they're not, I want, what I want to get down is kind of the pieces that go along with any freelance project, regardless of who it's with or what the scope of it is. What are the things I need to track? What are the things that I'm going to need to get into a calendar or into a project manager or into a paper planner what are the items in freelance that I need to keep track of So here are some of the things that go into any freelance job. There is the deadlines. Those come right up front. There is the briefs or the requests, basically the outline of what it is that they want. I guess maybe spec is another thing to write on here. Then there's the communication. What, am I communicating via email? Am I making a phone call with somebody? Keeping track of the communication, keeping it all organized so that I can find the things I need to reference. Sometimes something will happen in an email and I'll need to be able to find it later. And then inspiration, whether I put that on Pinterest or somewhere else, like I I, like if I know what the project is going to be, I want to get inspiration, like images and ideas from whoever I'm doing the work for so they can give me an idea of what they want. And I might need to find my own inspiration and send it to them to find out whether or not that's a good idea. Then we have progress. I need to figure out how to keep track of my progress, especially if it's a project that has many moving parts breakdowns of the, how the work is going to get done in the first place. Like I need to figure out like, what's my timeline? How am I going to do this? Do I need to communicate that? And then invoicing and, you know, figuring out, making sure that payment gets taken care of. And then also having a place to mark off when payment has happened. So that's freelance. Sounds very civilized business. Now this next section is going to be about teaching. It's going to be whether it's like a wild 30 type class, whether I decide to do any other sort of online classes, anything like that, I need to know how, what pieces do I have for that that I need to break down? So here we have outline, the outline of whatever class it is, any handouts I need to do for it, any videos and posts I need to do for it, comments within the structure of whatever class it is, follow up promo, getting the class out there in the first place, and then payment, however the class is marketed, how is the payment gonna happen? I'm not gonna do a section on social media because I have basically come to the conclusion that my way of using Facebook and Instagram especially is not to do an editorial calendar, but just to post things as they feel good to me. That is the only way that I really find joy. If I need to post, like do promo posting for one of my videos or my podcast, that should be wrapped up in the other stuff, not in a specific thing. Because I found when I was using the calendar that that's just not something that I generally am interested in. If I was doing a takeover or something, maybe that's one thing. But for general social media posting, it works better for me to keep it spontaneous. Otherwise, I get grouchy. So we're going to leave it at that. But the last thing that I need to break down right here is the things that I would need to have on a family calendar for my husband to access. Note the use of eggplant colors. So here's the stuff that would need to be on a shared calendar situation. Appointments, like doctor's appointments, car appointments, things like that. There's a lot of music on here. Rehearsals. There are the after school or Saturday night, Saturday and Tuesday rehearsals that my oldest has. There is my rehearsals with my quartet. There's my husband's rehearsals with his band. There's his band gigs. There's Katie's band gigs. <laughs> 
the days we pay bills and when things are due, meetings that either of us have that impact the rest of the family schedule. Like I don't need to know when his work meetings are unless they're going to go outside of work, but I might need to know, or he might need to know if I have a meeting at a time when he's going to need to be home with the kids. Anything having to do with school, back to school night, stuff like that. Uh, church stuff again kind of goes with meetings but like any meetings or work that either of us has to do with the church that you know will impact our time my travel his travel cu the custody of the kids that's important for us so these are all things that I think a google calendar might be good I'm going to stop filming right now to see if I can figure out a way to decide where any of these things would best be like best be suited for. I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet, so I'm gonna think about that. And while I think about that, I'm gonna go off camera, but for you guys, it'll be right about now. I'm back. Now, when I stopped filming this yesterday, this is, I'm actually picking up this filming the next morning. I had intended to write all the things on cards and then just sort of sort them into where I think they might go. And I wasn't really sure what I was doing. And then I had a friend come over to talk about church stuff and that wound up lasting for two hours. And by the time she left, my husband got home. And he saw what I was doing and decided to help because this is something he's very good at organizing. All of the ideas from my sketchbook and I color coded them on these cards. And then my husband had me write out, I think it was six categories. And those categories were genius, AKA work that I do that involves generating ideas, upkeep, which is like maintenance, you know, things that I need to do that aren't really involved in creating content or anything else, but they involve like, like, you know, making sure people get added to my group. Pre-production or the planning phase. Then there is the actual content creation, post-production or like editing, things like that, getting things scheduled and uploaded, marketing, and business, making sure that when I think about what's coming, I'm thinking about it not just in terms of what I want to do, but in terms of growing my channel or whatever the case may be. And I felt weird about marketing. I didn't like that name, but he he works in marketing. He's like, well, we'll call it marketing and business. So I'm going with him for some of these things. We took a folding table out in our garage and put these five categories or six categories out and then started sorting the cards into the categories. We wound up turning into, instead of just a trying to figure out what tools were going to be good for me to track all of this shit. Also kind of trying to think about how I want to organize my work week, which is something I've struggled with since starting the podcast because it's added a whole new layer of shit that I haven't been able to handle. After we divided them up into sections, then what we did was we took a look at what things I need to do daily, what things I need to do weekly, and what things I do monthly. Content creation is another good spot to show you that because there's a lot of all of them. So daily, what do I do daily? Well, if I'm doing freelance work, I work on that a little bit every day. If it was daily, it was at least three times a week, usually. Like at least three times a week, I sit down to film videos, usually a couple videos at a time. And then weekly would be recording a podcast. I usually record one a week. Live videos, usually one a week, depending on, like depends on the section, like where I'm doing it, but like at the most weekly sneak peeks for my patrons. And then for monthly things, I do like my lettering and my doodle challenges once a month. You know, I come up with the, the prompts for those. I do monthly downloads for my patrons once a month. So I divided everything up into how often I do it. And then once we looked at all of the daily, weekly, and monthly stuff for each category, then I went and kind of thought about where it naturally would fit in my planning process for what I need to do. And I think what we came up with, I'm gonna keep using my bullet journal and my Erin Condren planner, and I might use my teacher planner to help me break some things out, but I honestly, it's like as much as I like using it, it wasn't helping. It, was, it wasn't hurting, but it wasn't helping, if that makes sense. Like I was able to keep track of things in it, but shit still changed, and it was just really difficult for me to stay on top of things with that planner. So I'm going to keep it because I think I might be able to find some more use for it. But I think some of these things are going to move into the digital world because I also need to come. I remember I made the list of all the things for a family Google calendar for Jesse and I. At the same time, I'm also going to create a work Google calendar that has my editorial calendar on it and any timed appointments. I'm still going to use my planners. I'm still going to use my bullet journal, but I'm going to move. I'm going to keep the running calendar of everything that's going to be happening also online so a my husband can see it if he needs to and b it'll be easy for me to like pull that information into my planners each week i think is what's going to happen and then the other thing i'm going to do is move almost all of my idea generation into evernote because the problem i've run into is that when i keep running lists of ideas in my bullet journal i either have to go into the old bullet journal when i fill it up and now that i'm memory keeping in my bullet journal i'm probably going to fill this up in two months and i need to have 
lists of things that are easy for me to get to no matter where I am. If I see a comment from one of you, if I come up with an idea, I need to have an easily accessible list of ideas for the podcast, for videos, for Patreon, for all the things. And so we figured Evernote would be a good use for that. And then when I want to break individual ideas down, research, get things like series fleshed out, stuff like that, then I can do that in my bullet journal because it'll be more immediate and I'm not going to have to go back to books to go find it. And I'm not going to set my Google Calendar up on camera. I will set it up. And then if you would like a video where I show you what I've wound up with, with Evernote and Google Calendar, let me know and I can do that. But what I'm going to do right now is take the info from these cards and move it into my bullet journal so that I can look at one spread without having to shuffle through cards and build the things I need to build. So I'm going to use teal for YouTube, pink for podcast, purple for Patreon, green for freelance, yellow for everything else. I have stuff in here for like when I do wild thirties or I create courses, but I'm not going to actually stick that in here. I'm going to set those to the side because I was having a lot of like, those are bigger projects that need kind of their own focus stuff. And I think it wasn't working for trying to figure the rest of this out. So I'm going to do that right now in my bullet journal. I'm going to divide this up into six and it's going to be for each of these categories. And then I will list each thing and I will highlight it for its specific whatever. And then I will go and I will make a mark next to it. Just tell me where it's going to go. Let's start adding this in. I'm just going to do daily, weekly, monthly, and I'm already not spelling things right. So looking at my genius stack, which is mostly ideas, I pretty much decided I was going to try putting all of this in Evernote, except for the research stuff, which would go into both my Evernote and my bullet journal, like re like general research into Evernote and specific video research into my bullet journal. I'm going to write in red so that it's easy for me to pick out where stuff is supposed to go. This is not going to be the prettiest spread, but it's functional. <laughs> My thing that I'm going to do at the same time I build this calendar, P.S., is to build out a couple of ideal weeks, which is something I've talked about before. But now that I've seen all the pieces, I can really think about what time I need. Now, again, an ideal week only works so well as if I don't have meetings and shit like that, but it'll give me a guideline. So if you would like to see that when I show the other stuff, then if you want me to show any of the stuff I do digitally, let me know in the comments. And I'm going to emphasize for the, like the 45th time in this video, I'm not bullet journaling digitally. I'm not going to be moving my planners online. This is a tool to help me with my regular planning so I can stay on top of shit. For upkeep, this would be things I need to do on the daily. And I figured that I could put all of this shit in my bullet journal. Jesse actually suggested I create maybe like a maintenance checklist, like a daily, weekly, and monthly checklist for maintenance and upkeep stuff on my channel. When I have the time set aside, I can say, okay, time to go check ads, time to go check comments and all these things and like just take care of them all at once as opposed to being all willy nilly about it. So these would all be bullet journal and potentially a checklist. Now for the weekly upkeep stuff. So for these things, it is my patron back end and sending any invoices I need to that week and the podcast, Facebook post I'm putting up in the group. These things are things that happen weekly. And again, Jesse is suggesting, and I agree with him doing it in my bullet journal, scheduling it, but also maybe having a checklist. For the monthly stuff, the stuff that I had for upkeep actually has to do with potential courses or anything like that. And since I'm not at a place where I'm scheduling that yet, I'm not gonna mess with it right now. So that is the upkeep category pre-production category, one of my heartier ones, because this involves a lot of planning. <laughs> Imagine that. I don't have any daily tasks for this because these things are done on a weekly or a monthly basis. Most of this has to do with deciding when I'm going to film what, like when I'm filming what and when I'm recording what, and then doing like communication and a lot of like freelance work, like talking to people, sending emails, stuff like that. And so most of this is going to get scheduled in my bullet journal, except I would say that the, the recording and the filming schedule would probably get broken out looking at Google Calendar and then moving it to my bullet journal or my planner. And I would keep the guest communication at least marked in Evernote. Maybe. I don't know yet. That's something I haven't quite figured out yet. 
So these things would probably be in my planned out in my Erin Condren and my Google Calendar. Now we will go to content creation. Marking down when I'm actually filming will go in my, and working on this will go in my Bujo and my EC. My Bujo for specifics, my EC for like bigger kind of points because I like to say this is a filming day and then in my Bujo, this is what I'm filming, if that makes sense. I think this would all be a Bujo and EC. Now, dates and times will go in my Google Calendar as well, but the planning of these things and the planning to spend the time on them will go in my planner and my bullet journal. Seems very hurly-burly. Once I actually get this all built, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Now, post production which is like editing and things like that so for post-production I actually don't have any monthly tasks and it mostly has to do with my videos and my podcast editing them getting all of the metadata like the descriptions the thumbnails and then getting them actually scheduled weekly and daily basis because with videos I do enough video I put up four videos a week and I usually try to record about six so it's a lot of editing every week and with a podcast it's usually one podcast per week that I'm editing and all of this will get scheduled in my bullet journal in my Erin Condren, depending on how detailed it gets. Again, bigger chunks in my Erin Condren, more details in my bullet journal. I have a lot of weekly tasks and monthly tasks and no daily tasks for marketing and business on my list, so I'm just gonna divide it into two. We have goal tracking and goal setting, goal tracking weekly, goal setting monthly. We have for YouTube, we have working on playlists and YouTube promotion weekly, and then the editorial calendar and analytics monthly. And then for the podcast, I actually, the editorial calendar evolves weekly because it, it, on when I have guests confirm that they're going to be on it. So I do that weekly instead of monthly. And then promotion for the podcast happens weekly and communicating with potential guests and other podcasts for me to potentially be a guest on there. That's also weekly. And then for monthly, my patron calendar, I also develop that monthly and yeah. And so I think that calendars will live in Google and my regular planner as well. Potential guest communication goes into Evernote and then I'll move them into my bullet journal once they've confirmed. Same with other podcast reach out for Evernote. Goal tracking and goal setting will be in my Bujo playlist and promotion. It's just reminding me to do those things. So that'll go on the calendar and analytics also reminding me to do that will go on the calendar and I will write about what I learned from the, the analytics in the Bujo. So I think I've got this all broken up to use like two paper products and two digital products. We'll see how it works. As for the Aaron Connor teacher planner, I'm going to kind of set it to the side right now until I get this digital situation worked out to see if there's stuff in the planner that works. We also have to add accounting to this list and that's monthly. And I don't know what pro like thing I'm going to use for that. As much as I love paper products, I realize that there is a beauty to using digital. And so what I'm going to try and see is if I can come up with a mixture of the two that gives me my dissatisfaction of using paper products while having the convenience and the ability to shuffle things around without it looking a hot mess with digital. If you are interested, like I've said already, in seeing how like the digital stuff that I come up with and the evolution of that, please let me know in the comments. I know that some of you are very attached to your paper and you don't want to hear about digital stuff, but I'd like to know if it's something you're interested in hearing about. Other than that, thank you for bearing with me. This has been a very strange, long video and I appreciate you sticking around. Give me any tips you have for organizing this kind of stuff in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time.